Hello guys and welcome to the Top 10 Countdown. That's right, it is the 10 best games of 2018 as voted for by the writers of NGB. And we're going to jump straight into it um, with a game that me and Andy played an awful lot of and we absolutely loved. It's Guacamelee 2. Guacamelee 2 is a very good game. It is, yeah. So um, have either Gary or Johnny, have you guys played Guacamelee 2 no, a guacamole. The original one I played a bit of, yeah. 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 But, um the second one I've yeah, I've not even gone anywhere near it, unfortunately. Okay, Johnny. I mean, I'd say they uh... Hello, Andy's on. What are you what are you <laughs> I was saying it's basically more guacamole, the second yeah. one, All but right. tighter and more fun. Carry on with your anecdote. My <laughs> anecdote is I've played it a bit and it was all right. <laughs> it, it's better than all right. It gets. I like the style of it. It's nice, like sort of uh, that kind of day of the day Mexican uh, mm. kind of cocoa vibe. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really good. Like the, I think the thing with the the first guacamole was that it was a game that you could play on the go without any issue. Like I think I completed Ooh. it on the Vita and. Yes. Yeah. When the when the sequel got announced, I thought ah, I'm all over this, and it, it took me a little while to adjust to playing it on you know the big screen with with a controller mm. and stuff like that. But when you when you get your head into it and when you get your head around a lot of the, the the mechanics and stuff like that, it it just flows really well. Like you can chain combos off enemies and you can do all sorts, and it's just mm. the artwork, the the art style, the soundtrack, everything is just really really good, and it, it all fits perfectly. Um, and to be honest, there's only I, I, I only need to get one more trophy um, to complete oh, wow. the, the Platinum Trophy, uh, which is play through the game again on hard mode. So I probably will do that at some point, but it, it completely sunk its hooks into me. I think I had a week mm. off, and we got the code through nice and early, so mm. I, I started playing through it and just couldn't put it down. It was so good. It's um, good. Yeah, so... talking about it being portable, um, you know, if if that's what you want, anytime now ish, really, I think it's coming out on Switch, isn't it? It's out. It's out on the Switch right now. It's out mm. as we record. Well, there you yeah. go. It's portable. Yeah, and I think the I think the original's got a um, a discount on the Switch as well. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah, Guacamole Two uh, is is an excellent Metroidvania, and I'm not going to lie, I forced Andy to use the subtitle of Wrestlevania for the uh, no, for the I'm, review. I'm, with that. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. <laughs> I was very pleased with that uh, with that strap line. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm not the huge. I'm not the biggest fan of of Metroidvanias in general, but I think the sense of humor and the artwork and the the, the way that everything fit together with um, with Guacamole Two really sort of pushed me towards playing it and, and, you know, playing it through to completion. So, um, yeah, there we go. Guacamole 2 is our is our number 10 game of the year for 2018. Um, onwards to number 9. And, God's sake, Andy, tell us about Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers is a very good game with lots of characters in it. Um, Objection. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan does not like this because he thinks it's a game that's based on random numbers. It's a game um, of chance. It's not really, though, is it? Um, if you've actually played it, you would know that this is not the case. I uh, play Smash Brothers. How dare yeah, you? I'm a games yeah, journalist. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, yeah, which count? Which count? <laughs> you're making very blanket statements. <laughs> I mean, Smash Brothers Ultimate is basically every, everything from every Smash Brothers game ever, plus other bits. Um, it's got a very solid single player mode. It's got some very tight controls. They've really, you know, gone all out to sort of balance the playing field. The online's not great. The online's a little bit broken at the minute, but hopefully that will uh, that'll change. Um, but yeah, no, it's just a great game. It's a lot of fun. It is a game that you can play with very little skill, yes, um, but it's also got a lot of depth that if you really want to sort of dedicate yourself to learning each character and understanding some of the more advanced techniques that are available, you know, it's it's um, it's very good for sort of tournament play. And, uh, you know, you can't say that about a lot of fighting games. A lot of fighting games are very, very technical through and through. Um, so having something that's got that fun aspect to it, as well as the technical aspect, is always very good. And Fair it's got enough. a lot of characters. And I so, like it. <laughs> but the thing is with the characters, you start with eight. Yes. Does that 76. Not... I was going to say, there's a lot. Yeah. I like that, though. I like you have to unlock them. Yeah. I think that's a, a cool thing. I think, I think Kieran said it very well in our group chat. Is uh, He's saying it's, it's refreshing that you actually have to unlock characters instead of buying yeah. this DLC. Um, 
But it's, Isn't there a season yeah. pass as well, though? <laughs> there is a season pass, and they are adding new characters and stages, but it looks like they're all from third-party games um, because um, the first announced one's from Persona 5. It's Joker, mm-hmm. I think, from Persona 5. And yeah. there's a rumour going around at the minute that it's leaked that the next DLC character is going to be a Dragon Quest character. Um, okay. with Dragon Quest stage and music and all sorts of other stuff. Because, hmm. um, of course, the big point of it is it's a mashup. So the more characters and stages and music you get, you can change the music on the stages. And, you know, you've got all these little tributes to things like, you know, not even just Nintendo stuff, but, you know, Metal Gear, Final Fantasy, Bayonetta, um, and Street Fighter and characters like that. And there's just loads of little Easter eggs and tributes in it. So if you're into that kind of uh, gaming, it's just... It's just lovely. It's just great to go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that character from Metal Gear Solid who had the bomb inside them. Yeah, moving on. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Smash Brothers, uh, is, it's not for everybody, but um, it gets our number number nine spot on our Game of the Year list. Number eight is um, Hitman 2. So Hitman 2, obviously the, the sequel. And what's to... number seven? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Hitman 2, obviously the, the sequel to 2016's Hitman, which I personally thought was one of the best games of that year. And it's no surprise that I think Hitman 2 is, is genuinely one of the best games of this year as well. Um, has anybody else played much or any of it as of yet that is currently in the recording? I haven't, no. I've not played it. I mean, I don't dis- didn't dislike the last Hitman, but it didn't really get its hooks into me in the same way as it did you. So, you know, okay. you go you. And I don't think Johnny's touched it yet either. What? What? Oh, sorry. You... I fell asleep when Andy was on about Smash Brothers. Uh, what, <laughs> hey. what, 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 uh, there we go. No, Hitman 2. Uh, I only played a bit of it we did for that video. Um, so I... Yeah, I mean, if it's like Hitman 1, it's probably great. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that, that is exactly the way to look at it. It is it is Hitman yeah. Season 2. Oh, actually, um, I played at EGX as well, didn't I? We played the... Um, the, the, um, the Miami level. The Miami level, yes. At EGX, it was very good. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, the thing is with, you know, with Hitman 2... Uh, the first game was episodic, so kind of released uh, one map, one mission every every couple of months, I think it was. Uh-huh. Um, and that was... Personally, I really enjoyed that. I thought it was a really good way to get the content out, and it allowed you to um, soak in the maps and, and get your head around the, the ways to do the missions in that map, and you kind of had your different targets and things like that, your elusive targets that, that came in. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good way to release it. And the the strange thing about uh, Hitman 2 is that the trophy structure and everything is exactly the same as the first game. So it's almost like you've got that um you've got that episodic feel to it, but it's all been released in one go. So I don't know, I mean I'm presuming it was something to do with the publisher change and things like that that they wanted to keep the seasons thing going. Um they definitely at one point talked about season 2 of Hitman, but um it, everything about this game is just bigger and better like they're with the exception of the cutscenes in the story mode because the cutscenes are like one static image of the of the character models and things like that with the camera just sort of slowly panning in and out and and things like that with voiceovers so it's not fully animated so you can see where they've had to sort of cut a little bit of time out of the, the production schedule to get those done um but honestly everything else is just so so much better than the first game um, and they even down to things like the mirrors. So, like the mirrors in the first game, you could walk up behind somebody. You could essentially, if there was an option to, you could do one of the Fortnite dances, and nobody would notice you in the mirror. Cool. Um, but, but with this one, if you sn- if you try and sneak up with somebody, um, then they will see you in the mirror. Um, in the tutorial level, that does it. It, exam- it gives you an, it, sorry, it gives you an example of that. That's actually really good. Uh, there's a, a woman who is your target who is in her bathroom she's looking in the mirror and if you climb through the window to try and strangle her she'll see you and she'll go ah and alert the guards and all the rest of it Mm -hmm. however somebody's in the shower in the bathroom as well so as the bathroom gets steamed up like it steams the window uh, steams the mirror up so she can't actually see you sneak up okay Mm -hmm. there's loads of there's really cool little things like that throughout the game um and it's just so well polished like the with this with the exception of the briefcase which i think they've now um, they've now tamed because you could throw the briefcase at somebody and it wouldn't stop until it hit them. Even if they, <laughs> even if they were running yeah. away and round a corner, the briefcase would follow them and it would hit them. It was amazing. 
Wow. I think, I think they've patched <laughs> it out now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, everything about Hitman 2 is is just better than the first game. And if you want to, you can actually play everything from the first game in, in, in the new one as well. So um, yeah, Hitman 2, I would love it to be higher than it is, but uh, it is our... Uh, our pick for our number eight spot in our game of the year list. So, mm-hmm. congratulations. Um, next up, we've got Yoku's Island Express uh, at number seven, which That's is a lovely game. I was going to say it's a game that I think me and you have played, Andy. Has anybody else we played? Uh, Deb's oh, no. played it a lot. Yeah, I know yeah, Deb. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know Deb played it, and she uh, she sort of said that that was uh, her number two. Um, and she said that it's one of the most charming and delightful games she's played this year. Knew it'd be my type of game, but I underestimated just how much I'd love it. I'm still head over heels for it. Uh, following a small bug with a big heart was one mon- one monumental adventure. Um, an amazing experience from beginning to end. I couldn't wait to share it with everyone and all I was talking about for weeks. Couldn't help myself in recommending it to anyone I knew who loved the games. Music's infectious and uplifting, and the hand-painted character and world design is adorable. It's unique, quirky, and ingenious, and I advise everyone to add this to their collection. I think that sums it up. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, lovely game. It's it's basically a Metroidvania with Sonic Spinball mixed in. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's it's kind of got that pinball-y feel to it, and it's Ooh. um, it, it's a really weird sell, isn't it? It's like you know, you, you, somebody, oh yeah, there's a, there's a game about a beetle that's got attached to a ball, and he has to deliver post around an island, mm. and it's basically pinball but with platforming. Mm. Very strange, but it's. Uh... I, I remember seeing it at EGX um, in 2017 and thinking, "Oh, that looks really nice." But no way in a million years would I have thought it would have ended up on my game of the year list. But it is yeah. so gorgeous. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's that's absolutely fair. Um, so Yoku's Island Express, uh, I, I I can only concur that it, it fits on our number seven spot uh, on mm-hmm. the list. Number six is a game that we've already spoken about during these uh, discussions so far, uh, and it's one that I know Johnny's a fan of, and I'm also a very big fan of this game. It's See. Tetris Effect. See. Yeah, so uh, Tetris Effect is, as we said in the, the big surprise category, um, Tetris Effect is one of those games where it kind of got announced and everyone just went, huh, this looks good. But if you'd have said to me this time last year, by the way, uh, there'll be a Tetris game on your game of the year list. I would have told you to go away. <laughs> um, in said, probably... Give me Dr. Robotnik's Me B machine and we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. Like Tetris Effect is, is just wonderful, isn't it, Johnny? I think for me, games work best when they're like a form of mindfulness. Like it just takes your mind off everything else and you're focused on that game. Yeah. I think Tetris is is the best game for that even like i've got uh, right next to me now i've got an old game boy that always has tetris in it and uh tetris effect is like that but like turned up because it has so much more going on to take to just kind of create this uh atmosphere and world around it like with the sound and everything it's incredible and kind of like the music changes as you move the blocks around and it gets more intense like the more uh lines you get and uh the visuals going on behind you as well and every level is kind of it has its own little theme and yeah, it just really takes takes your mind off everything and you kind of get so into this kind of flow state of playing Tetris even more than usual. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um I, I just think it's it's brilliant. I you know, I I made my um I made my feelings clear on it with the, the, the VR and the, the, the best surprise conversation that we had the other day, and it's honestly just if you've not played it, you, you owe it to yourself to play it really. It's it's Tetris in its purest form. Um, I think the uh, in in essence, it's basically Tetris in its purest form. But obviously, then you start digging into it, and you've got the like the effect modes, and you've got things like that. Um, the oh, I can't remember what it is. It's, it's something called like is it the random mode where you can go into it and it, it randomly throws in effects. Yeah, I think you're right there. Yeah, random yeah. mode. Yeah, so it'll it'll like it'll do things like it'll flip the board horizontally, it'll flip it vertically, it'll give you an oversized version of one of the pieces made up of blocks and things like that. It's mm. there's so many cool things about it, and it's it's just really enjoyable. I, I think um, Tetris Effect is a game that you should well you should really play it. I think if we'd uh, if we'd have actually gotten around to reviewing it, it, it would have been you know 
possibly pushing into double digits because I think Tetris is, you know, ultimately one of the best games of all time, and this is one of the best versions of Tetris. So, mm. um, yeah, I just I absolutely adore it. I think if you've not played it, go and get it, and uh, it, it's worthy of being higher. But it is sat at our number six on our game of the year for 2018 list. Yes. Um, number five on our game of the year list is a game that I think I'm going to leave to Andy and Gary because I know they're the ones that were the cheerleaders for it, and it's Forza Horizon Four. Mm. Forza Horizon so, uh, Four. Yeah, um, so Gary, go for it. Yeah, um, if if you love racing games that, and you don't give a shit about sim sort of type racing <laughs> games, then there's no better out there, I don't think, than Forza the Forza Horizon series. Forza yeah. Horizon Four is amazing. Um, I've played enough of it to realise it's a great game. Um, I know that the sort of DLC they've just released is not going to be that great, um, but as a core game, um, it's so much fun. There's just a, mm. it's just a world you just want to explore. There's so much in it, um, and if you played any of the previous Forza Horizon games, you know what to expect with four. Um, it's yeah, it's great fun, and considering it's in the UK as well, it's 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 great, but it's slightly weird at the same time. Just um, just the way it's sort of all designed, and it's mm. it's although it's not authentic to how the uk is in terms of the roads and um, the sort of ex- like how big it is um, it's like a compressed version of the uk uh, the northern part of the uk should i say um but yeah it's just great fun um if you yeah if you love your sort of arcade style races um playground have done an amazing job again um so yeah forza horizon 4 is immense absolutely immense excellent yeah it, it's it's a game i keep meaning to pick up but um, I know Andy, you you grabbed it recently. Uh, what what were your I, things? I I I mean I I've actually been playing it an awful lot this weekend. We're feel, we're recording this on a, a Sunday evening, and um, I was looking for something yesterday just to kind of have some chill out time with during the day. And I've actually ended up sinking another five or six hours into it over the course of a weekend, which is pretty good for me because I mean you know being a racing game, it's something I can stick on with the kids around. Um, mm. and it's just, it's relaxing. It's a chill out game. You know, it's not, it's not too taxing. You don't have to think about too much about what you're doing in it. And you can just kind of bounce off different events, just explore the world. Um, you know, go and find the hidden barns and, um, find the, the sort of the special cars in there. Oh, I got a uh, TVR the other day. I got, um, Gene Hunt's car from life on Mars. <laughs> is one of the ones you can discover the uh Audi tt quattro is it yeah i think it is yeah and it's riddled with bullet holes when you find it oh, that's cool. <laughs> and, you do it and it's just little easter eggs like this and um yeah i found a, a knackered old um mini cooper um from the italian job the other day and it's just little is it mats <laughs> it might well be Matt's actually, although he's done his up, so you know it might not be quite as 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 uh, you know as nice looking as. But it's just a lovely, relaxing, chilled out little game. It doesn't push you to do things if you don't want to do them. You know, it's it just invites you to just kind of cruise around, find things, and yeah, it's lovely. And the world is beautiful. It's it's looks gorgeous on my hdr tv um the skies are absolutely phenomenal and when you do find a location that you recognize even if it's completely out of context like you know i was exploring the world and all of a sudden oh i'm at derwent water oh yeah i recognize this i've been to the lake district um oh that's bamba castle i know this i recognize this um which is something that i've not got from you know the previous forza games the horizon games obviously because they were set in what was it australia and america Mm. There's two and three of those are the only other ones I've played. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's lovely. It's just great. It's a great game. Really, mm-hmm. really deserving. If you've got an Xbox, it's one of the few Xbox exclusives that you can buy. So you should yeah. get that. Um. Hey, so yeah, so uh, I think that's, um, that's what, number five on our list. So number four um, is a game that I know, Johnny, you played an awful lot of and uh, you really enjoyed it, it so is it fallout 76 it's not fallout 76 it's smash oh, brothers it's also yeah, not smash it's brothers, brothers. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's assassin's creed odyssey yeah yeah i hadn't uh, played the assassin's creed game for quite a while before this um so it was really nice to come into this and see that ubisoft from doing the same thing year on year for many years have actually got very good at it turns out um 
I also mm. really like that it's uh, the setting as well. In ancient Greece, it's like really sunshiny and lovely. I like a game with a nice setting, like, you know, just cause and stuff. But it's all nice and sunshiny. It's beautiful. And uh, the combat feels very quick and arcadey. It's lovely. And there's like a lot going on there as well. Obviously, you've got the whole Ubisoft uh, icon littered map and everything. Mm. Uh, and also, the character stuff are really well, really well voiced. Uh, I was into yeah. the choice between um, Cassandra and Alexios. I went for Alexios in my main playthrough, but I watched my girlfriend play with Cassandra. And uh, yeah, I think they're very, both very well voiced and uh, the dialogue's great as well. Excellent. So I know you you kind of uh, you reviewed it for us and um, I think you gave it a nine. I think so. Let me tell you, I gave it a 8.5, actually. 8.5. Ooh. OK. 5, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the, the thing is that my um, my thoughts on uh, on Odyssey, I've yet to play it. And I think that's basically Ooh. because I kind of tired a little bit of Origins. Mm. Yeah. Now. I know you said that you'd not played it for a while, but yes, I think that's why I was kind of I was really keen to to see your um your thoughts on it as a game where it's a bit like okay, um I've not played one of these in a while, so I'm I'm reviewing it as a standalone thing rather than a, a you know a sequel to to Origins. Yes, um, I you've you've got me tempted to play it if I'm honest. Well, I mean, I. Th- I can also see that if you've been playing the same game year in, year out, and will continue to do so for the next year, however many years, the novelty of it might get a bit bland. Because I understand that Origins is uh, quite similar to this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so, you, came up with some, you came up with some new game modes, didn't you? I did come up with some new game modes. Thank you, Ben. Uh, I invented the uh, hidden game mode whale tag. Well, whale I, slash I'm fish champion. slash mammal tag. I'm champion of whale tag. <laughs> I yeah, got Andy most would, points. annoyingly, yeah. I did. There's a video of that on the YouTube of us playing a whale slash fish slash mammal tag. Yes, indeed. Yeah, but yeah, no, I was really impressed with the Odyssey. Um, I got well into it. Yeah. Excellent. It, actually, it was initially, when I did my list for Game of the Year, it was number one. But since submitting that list, I played another game, which is now my number one. <laughs> mm. Yes, indeed. Yes. So we'll come to that. We'll come yeah, to that. We'll That's come... at number two. So, we will uh, indeed. We'll Spoilers. So, Spoilers. Good lord. <laughs> what it was. So uh I think I think to be honest, our top three is gonna mirror a lot of top threes across uh, across the world. Yes. Uh when it comes to, to game of the year twenty eighteen. So um we might as well just go through the order. So at number three uh in our game of the year twenty eighteen list, we have Red Dead Redemption two. Yeah. So who wants to go first? I've played the least of everybody here, so I should probably just say I thought it was very good and what I played of it. Um, I didn't feel it was entirely number one, um, but if we were basing it purely on looks and world building alone, it should be. Yeah, um, I but it was very good. <coughs> yeah. That's fair, Gary? Yeah, um, no, I've played quite a bit of it. Um, <clears throat> blimey, I'm getting what Johnny's got. Um, <laughs> it's a computer yeah, it... virus because we're <laughs> remote <laughs> um yeah it it was amazing um as an overall package you can't sort of deny um what rockstar have created with red dead redemption 2 um i did have issues with it um certain sort of gun control should i say um those sort of mechanics are a bit fiddly at times and sometimes when you're inside a building it, it does that typical rockstar thing where um it, it the camera sort of gets confused with where you are located um, but as an overall package and a storytelling sort of perspective, it's it's a phenomenal achievement, um, mm. and no one can sort of take that away from Rockstar. Like I can see this getting a lot of um, Game of the Year awards. Obviously, it didn't get our Game of the Year award, but um, you can't deny it. It's an, it is, will go down as one of the greatest games ever in video games, in my opinion. So yeah, um, it's it's an absolutely incredible game. Yeah, um, absolutely. Johnny, what what are your thoughts? I haven't played it to completion. Uh, I think the thing with Red Dead for me is that I play it and like Andy, I thought this is a very good looking game. Uh, There's incredible detail here. But my sort of, I go for games that uh, tell a short story in a short space of time. Like I thought, you know, talked about the game that's coming up next. Uh, and like, you know, I mentioned Titanfall and Doom earlier as well. Like, that's more my kind of game. And that's what put me off, I think, the scale of it rather than anything else. Mm. But I still play it and thought this is very good. Yeah, mm. um, I, I think that's the thing for me is that I, 
um got the game and i thought right okay let's let's do as much as we can on this and and plow through it and it was it it was one of those where i i'm not a big fan of like say huge enormous open worlds because i think you you can there are too many of them at the minute not everything needs to be an open world game and like you say johnny with with like doom and titanfall you've got that really confined narrative um and you know the 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 action is normally pretty good in them as well um But Red Dead kind of it really got its hooks into me. Um, mm. I I didn't want to put it down. I kept playing it and playing it and playing it. And um, I mean, Nick said here, um, Red Dead doesn't quite deliver on the narrative, but Rockstar's latest portrayal of the late West is perhaps the finest and most delicately crafted world that they've done, uh, and that's saying a lot. There's not many games that will become even more enjoyable when you veer from the main path, but such is the game's detail and grandeur that exploring uh, exploring can reveal a charm that few others share. Um, which is spot on. I think the, the the kind of the feeling when you drift off the main path and you find a stranger that's been bitten by a snake, it's like you know that that's been programmed in that like at some point you will encounter somebody. So it's just rolling a dice. But if you kind of try and put that put that to the back of your mind, you know, it's like I know that this is a random number generator that's going to give me something in the road up ahead, mm. but it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like the game's going, right, okay, we need to give him something because he's been riding for five minutes and he's not got anything. It just feels really organic when you kind of, mm. you know, you nip off the, you, you kind of t- take a left through the, through some trees or over a field and then all of a sudden there's a guy stood in the middle of the field or on just by the side of the road with his horse and he's like, oh, I can't get this shoe on and then, you know, you, <laughs> you go up to him and you talk to him and his horse kicks him in the head and rides off. You know, it's, I think that's that's the thing, though, and I had this when I I played through. I had a couple of these random encounters, and it's the fact that they are fleshed out. Though it's not like you know in previous games of this ilk where you meet someone randomly on the road, and it's like I've just been mugged. Go and chase those muggers down. Run after them. Shoot them. Come back. Thank you, sir. Here's your reward. Now we'll yeah. go about our business. It's like you know. I I think I met a woman who'd been trapped under a horse. I had to rescue her and take her back to Valentine. And on the way, you find out about her and why she's there. Yeah. And it's not just, it doesn't feel like a random encounter. It feels like you've met a person. And I think that's what I love about it, is yeah. that it feels like everyone in the world matters and that they have their own story. And I don't think that's something you get in a lot of games that don't have a smaller cast of characters. Yeah, I think as well. There's there's something that's there's something to be said about it because I I think it was Danny O'Dwyer on Twitter was talking about um one of the encounters that he had. He went into a house and there was a couple in the house that were a little bit strange, shall we say? <laughs> um, and what was it? No, that was it. Sorry, he found like a he found this guy like almost like digging a grave, um, mm. and there was a hole. So. He followed the guy back to his house, um, went into the house, confronted them, um, and then he said, "Oh, I'm going to be a bit twisted here." So he shot the guy and he lassoed the he, he lassoed the guy's wife, put her on the back of his horse, and started riding out to where the guy was digging the grave or the hole. And while he was riding out there, she was there going, "Oh, please don't take me back there, not back to there. No, you can't put me in there." And all this, it's like <laughs> they've gone to the trouble of thinking that someone's going to do this. Mm. And recorded dialogue to make sure that that is fleshed out. That's crazy. Like what? What level of detail can you even think of in any other game? That it's just mm. that, that's what a hundred-hour working week will give you. Hey. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, Robin says uh, so much bigger, so much more to do in the open world, and so a much more interesting and emotional character journey. Red Dead's improved in every way imaginable. Um, it's. It, it, it's great. I mean, it, it topped a couple of people's lists here, um, and I think um, you know the story of of Arthur Morgan as you go through the game. It, it grows and it grows and it grows, and you become really Ooh. attached. And it's it's just genuinely a fantastic game that um, I don't think anyone can begrudge our number three spot. No, uh, number two on our list for for game of the year twenty eighteen is Marvel Spider Man. So. Woo indeed. Johnny, talk to me about Spider-Man because you, you've been playing it recently. Well, I've probably played um, it the least and most recently out of everyone here. But when I... I am um... not, so... Oh, well, there you go then. Second time. <laughs> um, Again. I played it at EGX uh, 
and Insomnia, I think, uh, the little 15-minute demo thing. Mm-hmm. And I thought, this is all right. It feels quite nice swinging about and that. I didn't really bother with it after that. And then um, quite recently, in fact, a few days ago, uh, it was very cheap on PSN. I was like, I'll get this in quickly before the end of the year. So I picked it up. And just a few hours in, I thought it was absolutely wonderful. thought uh, the movement is obviously the big thing. Yeah. In terms of they've filled the world with so many collectibles, and it seems like they've never done it, but then it's just getting between them is just an absolute joy. When you get used to like all the different things you can do with the swinging, like the wall running and the little launches and stuff, absolutely beautiful. Uh, and also detail as well. It's not like Red Dead level, but like the podcasts and stuff, the Joe, J. Jonah James oh. podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, uh, I say this quite a lot. I like some games, but it's very well voiced as well. And the dialogue's good. Uh, yeah. And also the music, as we touched on in another podcast music, it's that classic Marvel orchestral swell. It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, I was just really impressed with it. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I do. But after getting past that kind of first couple of hours where it seems good, but a bit genre you really get into it. And it's just all the kind of also, I like how sort of mundane some of it is. Like, because yeah. it kind of presents like both sides, like Spider-Man and also Peter Parker as well, doing his day job and stuff. Yeah. And like you have these little side quests where you like get samples of like algae and have to help fish in a pond and it's so kind of like sort of unsuperhero y and like mundane <laughs> it's just really fun to do it's a real nice kind of diversion from all the big you know the big uh boss battles and things so like you know to be jetting around and like collecting like samples of smog to like report yeah. uh car manufacturers and stuff uh, over pollution yeah it's really nice i like it a lot doing a science Yes, it's would my number you, one. Would you like uh, an entire open world game based on that? Just going around doing little science things. <laughs> yeah, it has got the mini games as well in uh, mm. Doctor Ox Lab, uh, where you kind of make the little circuits and stuff to do the voltage and the little spectrum test. Yeah, it's just a beautiful little game. I think it's fantastic. Uh, my number one for game of the year. And there we go, Gary. What about yourself? Oh well, where do I start with this? Um, <laughs> it's it's fabulous to be honest. Uh, there was no. There's, there's no other game out there this year that made me feel like the character I was playing as. Um, mm. Spider-Man's brilliant at doing that. Um, when I first started playing it, I, like the swinging mechanics, I thought, wow, this is harder than I expected. Um, but that's because it's sort of easing you into it. Um, yes. And then after a while, you sort of gradually get better at it. Um, and then you're just swinging around like an absolute maniac. Um, yeah, it, it felt brilliant. Um, what I love about it as well is the fact that uh, Insomniac didn't sort of just take a Spider-Man story and run with it. They created their own sort of take on it. Mm. Obviously, Peter Parker is a lot older in this than he is in other sort of mediums out there. Um, and yeah, the story is great. Um, like Johnny said, like some of the side stuff's really cool. Um, the fact that you sort of switch between playing as Peter and Spider-Man, um, I like that. Um, yeah, the characters in it are really good. Um, it's just overall, and obviously it looks amazing as well. So I think they've done a great job. It, it's weird because what this reminds me of, it reminds me of the original Enchanted. Um, and I can imagine like the second Spider-Man, they're going to do one. We, I think we all know it. Um, mm-hmm. That's going to be like their Enchanted too. Um, it just feels that way. They're sort of building up to it. Um, but as a first sort of iteration into this trilogy, if they do a trilogy... Um, I think they've done incredible, um, and yeah, being a huge Spider-Man fan, I, I loved every minute of it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think um, a lot of people uh, were, I think, probably rightly skeptical. Um, I think the, uh, the one thing that's been quite evident this year is that there's actually been um, a bit of a renaissance from two, um, what I would probably consider highly regarded studios but they've they've not really had um a huge amount of of commercial success with some of the games that they've had and that, the first one of those is um is insomniac like they've they obviously made ratchet and clank they obviously you know had had success fairly early on with the playstation but then after that they've been i wouldn't say quiet but like you look at their last game you had like sunset overdrive didn't really set the world on fire um and it the thing that I picked up on in the review is that the mechanics of Sunset Overdrive have actually probably... They almost seem like a bit of a prototype for a Spider-Man game. Totally, yeah. When, when you look at it in that in that context, knowing that, oh, did they know at this point that they were going to be making a Spider-Man game? Like, mm. th- th- there's just so many... There's so many things around um, Sunset Overdrive where you think, okay, right, 
we going to, you know, h- how is this going to play into a game in the future? And then as soon as I remember me and you, Gary, sat in that theater in LA oh, when, mate. when Spider-Man got announced, everyone lost their minds. Mm. And as soon as the Insomniac logo came up and then followed by the Marvel logo, I think everything just clicked and you went, oh my God, that's perfect. Yeah. And... Yeah, I don't. I don't think you can get a per a more perfect um, tie in with Spider Man and Insomniac. There's no, they're perfect for each other. I think. Yeah, and it, it honestly just everything about Spider Man, they've they've made, they've made the perfect Spider Man game. I think like, a lot of people were um, really really hoping that they would get the um, uh, what do you call it the the the, the swinging right. That was obviously the main thing. Yeah, um, they they absolutely nailed it. Like they they hundred percent nailed it. And I think you can, if you want to, you can just hold down the button, hold down X, let go, and away you go. But you, if you want to, you can really evolve on your mechanics, and you can, you know, do flips in the air and do tricks oh, and stuff. And, and you can vary the speed by that, like, how long you hold the button and stuff, and how mm. like long you hold the web. Oh, it's beautiful. And the little launches as well, you can do. Yeah, perches so good. Yeah, I mean the, the combat as well. It's it's kind of. The worst thing you can say about it is that it's slightly derivative of the Batman combat, but it, it evolves on that. Like you get your gadgets, you get all sorts, and it does a lot more with it. But yeah, um, yeah, Spider Man is it is an excellent game, and I think you know Insomniac they've just they've knocked it so far out of the park. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Nick Nick just says here it uh, it, it shouldn't be under- understated how meticulously well the combat traversal mechanics and the atmosphere fit the universe, and it looks fantastic to boot. You can't really sum it up much more eloquently than that. It's just, mm. it, it's a perfect blend of everything that makes Spider Man really good and what Insomniac do really well. So, yes. yeah. can, um, I, can I change my biggest disappointment of this year to not having yet played Spider Man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys talk about it. I just, I'm really gutted that I haven't played it. But they need to. At time of recording, well, 30 quid on PSN. Get that. At, t- at time of recording, I may be just over a week away from owning it, so okay. I, I can't mm. really invest in any games at this point of the year. So, is Fair Father enough. Christmas bringing you it, Andrew? Well, he might be. <laughs> I've, suggested, <laughs> I've suggested that I might like it, so let's see. Man, Fair enough. So good. Like, I know it's number two, but it's like Ric Flair in the eighties, right? He doesn't need a title <laughs> belt to know he's the best, right? People love Ric Flair anyway without a title belt, and this is what <laughs> Spider Man is here. It's not number one. People love it enough anyway that it's basically number one. All right. <laughs> okay, what so we'll run through the top then? ten quickly. Um, number ten, we've got Guacamole Two. Number nine is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Number eight is Hitman Two. Number seven is Yoku's Island Express. Number six is Tetris Effect. Number five is Forza Horizon Four. Number four is Assassin's Creed or- uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, number three is Red Dead Redemption Two. Number two is Spider Man, and of course that means that number one is God of War. Now, did anybody, did anybody honestly think that a God of War game would be this well-received and top a Game of the Year list when it got announced? No. Not at all. That's why it was my biggest surprise. One of the reasons why. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know that, um, again, Gary, we, we were in the, the audience for this reveal. Oh, um, mate, that was insane. Yeah, so... The reveal was was something special in its own right. Um, before the press conference started, they had this. They had an orchestra kind of all the way round, and they had like male choirs at the side, and they were, you know, being really ominous. And as soon as they started playing, I, I think I remember turning to you and saying, "This is going to be God of War, isn't it?" And it was like, "Oh my god, are they really going to do this?" And it started off, and it's like you know this Norse campsite or this Norse mm. village, and. It just looked astonishing, and you sat there going, "This, this can't be in game, surely." And then, as soon as Kratos steps out of the shadows, you just think, "Oh my god, this is brilliant!" Um, then it cuts to like the behind the shoulder camera, and the whole that whole demo. I got a behind closed doors presentation of it, and they took a slightly different path. Mm. And honestly, I was just sat there going, "How is this a thing? How mm. does this game look this good and run this well?" It just, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, See, and I was initially think... sceptical of the over-the-shoulder camera. I didn't think it was going to work in a game as fast-paced as God of War, but I was but... really surprised. And that's the thing, they've slowed it down. They, they've yeah. slowed the combat down, and it it feels really weighty, because I think that was one of my 
not issues as such, but one of the things that was, you know, not my favorite about the the original trilogy mm. um, and Ascension, but we don't really count that. Um, <laughs> it, it all felt really lightweight. Like you'd throw the blades out, and there wouldn't be any heft to them. They'd just be like, you know, you press a button, something happens, and then something dies. But mm. with like the axe and spoiler alert, the other weapon that you get, um, everything feels really, really mm. heavy and really mm. hefty. Like, if you go and attack one of the... Oh, I can't remember the name of them now, but you, you go and attack one of the main enemies and you put that axe in the guy's shoulder, mm. you feel the weight of it as it goes into the shoulder and then you feel the weight as he puts his foot on the chest to, you know, pull it out. And it, the combat is just... It's something else. Like, I really didn't expect it at all. Um, I mean, uh, Gary, it was... Uh, was it your number one? It was my number one, yeah. Um, yeah. As much as I absolutely adored spider-man um i can't not put god of war number one um because if there's like that like i said previous on previous podcasts um the god of war series was a good series in my eyes but it was never a great series it felt sort of very sort of button mashy um but they've reinvented this series to it's they've gone completely the opposite way i thought they would um Mm. And they've created just an absolute masterpiece. Um, from start to finish, I enjoyed every minute of it. It looks absolutely breathtaking. Like you say, the the sort of combat in it feels weighty. Um, and the way when you pull the axe back, it feels like you're actually doing that. Just the, the way the mechanics are. Um, the story is incredible. I, I just don't think there is a better game this year, personally. I think they've done an absolute stellar job. Um, and you could see, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen like the some of the interviews with Corey, um, who worked on God of War, he's the creative director. Um, yeah, yeah. Like you can mm-hmm. see how much passion he's got for the series um, and his whole team as they put so much into it and they've created, in my eyes, one of the greatest games ever made. Um, mm-hmm. It's that damn good. Um, so yeah, I, I could not put this anywhere but number one. Yeah, I mean, you say that about Corey. He's actually got the um, the sigil for the the two dwarves. Like, he's got that as a tattoo on his chest. Mm, now. Yeah, like That's... it's just it, it, they've put so much into it. And I, I said about the you know the two studios that have actually got some critical reception this year and the commercial success that I think they've deserved. The first one was Insomniac. The second one has been Sony Santa Monica. They are definitely yeah. They are an absolutely top tier developer that have just really come in this year. And mm. steamrolled everything and just gone, no, 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 lads. We're making a game we want to make. Mm. And well, this that's is the, it. That's the, that's the crazy thing. Before Sony's sort of first party studios, you had everyone and then you had Naughty Dog. Now yeah. you've got everyone, Insomniac's nearly there, and then you've got Naughty Dog and Sony Santa Monica. Yeah. Mm. So they've literally sort of elevated themselves up there, which is mm. one hell of a feat, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, Johnny, you said in your um, in your list, you said that uh, taking a fairly repetitive franchise and launching it into a cinematic adventure is a masterstroke. Yes. Um, I, I mean, by that. Yes, I, and absolutely, you should. <laughs> yes. um, but yeah, your, your general thoughts on God of War. Well, I didn't play a huge amount of God of War. I watched someone else play it quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I thought as a world, it seemed really nice. And obviously it looks beautiful. Like when you get those close-ups and stuff, even playing it on a regular PS4, like the leather of the armor and all of that, and his lovely, lovely mm. beard. I've got serious <laughs> beard envy over crazy. <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely get why it's number one, to be fair. Spider-Man is more my kind of game by a long shot. But in terms of what they've done with a franchise that seemed a bit throwaway and mm. turned it into this, they've turned it into... I worry whether it's becoming like the Sony game. Do you know what I mean? And it's, a, it's quite similar in a lot of themes to like Uncharted... And uh, what's the other one that comes up as well that's very similar to that? Like they kind of like they have these kind of like uh, you know parenty child themes and stuff, and like it's a it's like single player only over the shoulder jobby. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I think yeah, I think you, you're you're kind of onto something, but it's not as egregious as like the Ubisoft game. It's no. not terrible because they are always very good. Like I loved Uncharted Four, but it feels like they're kind of homogenizing into like oh the Last of Us. That's the other one. Uh, they're kind of homogenized into like the Sony game, you know. But uh, aside from that, though, mm-hmm. I still thought God of War was good. I did a bit of the combat and stuff, and I know what you mean about the like the weight of the axe when you like pull it back. It feels like you're really kind of like hefting it back and like you're like building up a torso and stuff while you throw it. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's great, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, um, I mean, Robin said, uh, having never liked previous God of War titles, it's saying something in this latest installment is on my list at all. But this is a real reinvention of the series, even if it is still a hack and slash at heart. Norse mythology is cleverly woven into the existing fabric of the franchise, often in surprising ways. The story finally allows Kratos to evolve from being simply an angry grunt to a father who's somewhat lost in how to raise his son the best. This is a lot more interesting than the bloody tales of revenge that came in all previous titles. Um, and then, yeah, Nick says that this isn't exactly the God of War game fans of the series might have expected, but it certainly exceeded those expectations and then some. Um, in 20 years time when people talk about the PlayStation 4, God of, God of War will be the, among the first games on their lips um, mm. and Kieran uh, said it was his game of the year uh, it's a standout game of the year without a shadow of the doubt, it might be uh, might be a st- standout game of the generation God of War managed to reinvent itself with this perfectly driven story, uh, perfect story driven action adventure cross RPG which surpassed all of the expectations that you had for it Visually stunning, exceptional gameplay and writing that was both humorous and encapsulating are what make God of War his game of the year, and indeed ours. I know Andy, you you've been yeah you've been eschewing about God of War for quite a while. I have, yeah. I mean, I've, I, there's not a lot more I can say that I've not said on previous podcasts um, in this series. Go and listen to them uh, if you've not already done that. Why are you here anyway? Um, <laughs> but uh, Very rude. but yeah. Well, yeah, but you know, I mean, this is effectively part, you know, a, a part in a the series. They should have listened to the previous ones. Anyway, um, I, I can't say a lot more than you know. Other people have said that Gary said and Kieran said, um, and and you know, everyone else has said it, it's just it's the perfect blend of really responsive gameplay um the the mechanics side of it is just so so good and like you said you know it's not that button mashing um feel that you got from the original games but also from a maturity standpoint i've said this before the story has been elevated from um you know something that a a 13 year old would have written in the back of their exercise book to you know something that has genuine literary um uh, quality to it, you know. It's it, you look at all of the characters that are present in that story, and without going into any spoilers, every character has a solid arc which takes them from a start to an end point. Even sort of like the characters who you think are going to be quite incidental that you meet on the way, all have a very solid arc, and sometimes they converge in surprising ways. And you know, it certainly does open up the franchise with with little hints and suggestions throughout that it could go even further than the Norse mythology and it's been a very long time since I've played a game and I've got to the end of it and thought yeah no I want more of this please give me more of this um, uh, but God of War certainly delivers that and it is absolutely one of the best games I've played this year um, and like Kieran said possibly this generation mm. yeah 100% like it's just it is an as- astonishing game I mean I think I, I, I said this on Twitter the other day and I said that um, after I'd rolled credits on Red Dead, I said, "If you're looking to make, if you're looking to award the technical achievement of the year, I think it goes to Red Dead Redemption. Mm-hmm. But if you're going on, you know, Game of the Year, there's no doubt it's God of War. It's like the, the whole arc of everything. It, it's another game that, while it's quite long, it's got that, it's got that sort of quite focused critical path. So you know." Mm where you're going you know what you've got to do you know who you've got to you know you've got you know who you've got to kill and it's just it's so perfectly written and so well paced that it it felt like uncharted 2 to me because uncharted 2 was that kind of game where you'd get to a point and something would it almost feel like you're like okay if this goes on for another five minutes i'm probably going to be bored of it and then two minutes later they change it up to something else and they kept doing it every single time Mm. And God of War did that to perfection. Like there was, there was a couple of moments where I just thought, "Come on, I, I need to get to the end of this." But oh, I'm there. Mm. And I never once felt like I was getting bored with it. I never once felt like I was getting tired of anything. Um, to the point where I went back and I did all of those challenges on whatever mm. the realm was. Was it Niflheim or wh- whichever yeah. realm it is? Mm. I went back and I did all those challenges because I really wanted to complete the game and I wanted to do everything in it. Mm. And I'm not that kind of person normally. I don't normally go back and, and pick up the collectibles and do all of that stuff because mm. once I've done with the game, I'm like, okay, cool, bring on the next one. But this one, like, I was genuinely there going, I want to play more of this. I want, I want a lot more of this. Mm. Mm. Um, 
Do you know yeah. another insane thing about it? That the whole oh. game is just one camera shot, no cuts at all. God, yeah, it is, isn't it? Ooh, that it is, is yeah. absolutely incredible. Wow. Yeah. I'd, 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 I'd forgotten about that. Scenes, yeah, all the cutscenes take just flow in from mm. the gameplay and... They don't. There's no, like Gary said. There's no cuts. If if it focuses on another character, the camera moves to them and then moves back and then aligns itself behind Kratos to carry on the rest of the game. Yeah. It's it's seamless. Yeah, it's insane. And, yeah, I mean, it's just it's an astonishing game, um, mm. and it is well worthy of of winning game of the year. I think you know the, the mm. everything in it, like you said about the characters, Andy. I think they're all written really well. Like Brock and Sindri's mm. story is, is just brilliant. I, mm. I loved every minute of that. I think they're the, you know, two of the funniest characters that oh, I've seen. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just, I really want to see what happens with the, with the series now because mm. they've reinvented it in such a way that they can't now, they can't go back to what they had before. No, but no, I, no. I don't think they'd want to because I think they've done exactly what they needed to do for God of War, and I think they've done exactly yeah. um, what was needed for for the well for the PS4. Really, it's it's sold mm. it sold a, a ton of units off the back of it, and Spider Man did as well. Like it's just mm. what a great year for games. Oh yeah, insane year for games. Yeah, mm. and uh, I think next year, obviously, we're going to potentially start to see the teases of mm. the new generation. Um, I don't know how reliable some of the stuff is that's uh, being thrown about at the moment, but we will certainly see um, a bunch of new games. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got quite a few, um, we've got quite a few, you know, games that I say we're, we're really anticipating. So keep your eyes on, uh, on next gen base on the website, on the YouTube and, and subscribe to the podcasts and stuff like that. And uh, thank you ever so much, Johnny and Gary and Andy for joining me um, tonight. It's been it's been great. We've talked an awful lot about an awful lot of games, um, but hopefully now we've got our Game of the Year 2018 put to bed, and we will see you guys next year. Thank you ever so much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Have a good Christmas. <laughs>